Vilda Moosen is the wild mouse roller coaster at Grona Lund in Stockholm. While this ride has some hairpin turns, it has a much more unique layout than usual for this type of ride. It also packs in some bank turns and interacts mightily with the Jetline roller coaster. So does this make it one of the better wild mouse coasters out there? Find out in this review of Vilda Moosen. Wild mouse coasters made a resurgence in the 1990s. Manufacturers such as Mach and Mauer offered standard layouts and it's one of the most compact coaster models out there. Most parks can easily squeeze one of these into their parks with one of the standard layouts. But not Gronalund. This landlocked park is fully developed with less than 10 acres of land. So when they want to add something new, they need to get creative, and they most certainly do with Vilda Moosen. Gerslauer also developed a wild mouse coaster in the late 1990s, but was much different than the product offered by other manufacturers. Their model, known as the bobsled coaster, had the familiar hairpin turns, but was also capable of bank turns and drops. This made the layout much more customizable, dynamic, and adaptable. So it was a perfect fit for Gronalund. Vilda Moosen opened in 2003, and the engineering for this ride could not have been easy. The layout takes place atop pre-existing buildings. Not only that, but it winds its way around the Jetline roller coaster and at points I think they may even share some supports. That's pretty much unheard of for a coaster. So the coaster is fascinating to watch as the vehicle dips and dives every which direction. This coaster originally opened with purple track, which caused it to blend in with Jetline's teal track. This made it appear like one giant coaster. Vilda Moosen now is contrasting yellow track, which allows each coaster to pop more on its own. I have never been to Grona London particularly busy days, but Vilda Moosen typically has the longest wait in the park. While every other coaster has been a complete walk-on for me, this ride had nearly 15 to 20 minute waits each time, so I imagine this line will be even longer on actually crowded days. The wait is indoors at least. You head upstairs. There, you'll find a colorful queue line with some oversized items to make you feel like a mouse. Makes sense since Vilda Moosen is quite literally Swedish for wild mouse. But more notably, if you're a coaster nerd like myself, you'll find a series of pictures honoring other wild mouse coasters across the globe. And in the past, I've also seen them playing POVs on the TV screens as well. If you want to avoid this wait, there are two ways to do so. First, make this your first ride of the day. Second, use a jet pass on this attraction. These are skip the line passes. They cost roughly 100 kroner or 10 US dollars per ride. You reserve a 10 minute window, and you get near immediate boarding. Now I don't know if this is the case if you buy your wristband in person, but if you buy a wristband online, it comes with two complimentary jet passes, and I strongly recommend using at least one of them on Vilda Moosen. If you want to save this coaster for later in the day, you need to watch out for two things. One, Gronalund closes ride queues early, so the last train goes out right at park close. Second, if you visit on a night with a concert, Vilda Moosen closes well before the park does. This is because the ride is right across from the stage. If you want to get the exact time the coaster closes, use the Jet Pass site to find the final time blocks being offered for the day. Like many Wild Mouse coasters, Vilda Moosen runs several vehicles at once. While the dispatches are swift, especially because there's a separate load and unload platform, the cars are tiny. They hold just four people in two rows of two. I don't think it matters tremendously which row you're in from a force perspective, but smaller guests may like the front for the unobstructed view. Riders are restrained by individual U-shaped lap bars, and they're fine. This is the same restraint found in the other Gerslauer bobsleds. Once dispatched, you turn out of the station, and you're still a good few stories above the midway down below. You then turn into an alleyway. You then climb the 68 foot or 21 meter tall chain lift. You then start off with a short but zippy plunge. Then you rise upwards. No airtime, and I'll bury the hatchet now. You don't really get airtime on this coaster, except for one moment I'll highlight later. You then have a bank desk bend downwards. This is a fun little maneuver. This is followed by a sharp rise upwards and to the right. It has barely any banking at the end, so you get a nice jolt of laterals. You then pass through a mid-course brake run, which does not slow the train down at all. And that's thankfully the case with all the mid-course brake runs on this ride. This helps mightily with the pacing. 
Next are a few hairpin turns high above the ground. They offer solid laterals and impressive visuals. The first one passes under Jetline. The last is level with Twister's first drop. It is particularly cool if it's timed with another train coming by. Next is a swooping drop to the right, followed by a shallow climb upwards. Neither are all that impressive though. Build a moose and has a very tight bank turn around a support. I honestly have no clue how this ride passed clearance testing. You get darn close to so many supports on this ride. You then cruise through another brake run, not slowing down one bit. In fact, you may even speed up because there's a booster tire propelling you forwards. Then you have two more hairpin turns in quick succession, also delivering decent laterals. Next is a short straight drop, but it does have some punch. If you're in the back row, you may get a smidge of airtime. Then comes a bunny hill. It comes close to giving airtime, but not quite. Then you jump upwards above the station and navigate another hairpin turn. You get another burst of laterals as well as a great view of the midway down below. Now it's time for the finale. You pass through another brake run, slightly dip downwards, and navigate an upwards helix. It's light on the forces though. Then you have one last mild twist into the brakes. Then you return to the station, ending the 1,411 foot or 430 meter long experience. In terms of pacing, this is one of the better wild mice. While there are those aforementioned brake runs, they're over in a flash and they don't slow the train down. You also have a more unique and engaging layout. With all the twists and turns, you cannot really predict what's coming next. In terms of smoothness, this ride is incredibly smooth. Some Gerslauers can be rattly, but their bobsled model doesn't usually have this issue. So what would I rate Vilda Moosen? I would give this coaster a 5 out of 10. This is a fine coaster. I like the views this ride provides. You get nice sight lines of the park and several near misses with Jetline's track and supports. I also like the smooth tracking and twisty layout. However, I wish the forces were a bit better. While you have a handful of turns with solid laterals, other wild mice are better in this department. Then this one just doesn't have the airtime pops that other mice provide, especially if you compare it to the other Gerslauer bobsleds. But this is a nice change of pace from the usual wild mice, and it is an enjoyable family coaster for the Swedish amusement park. So those are my thoughts on Vilda Moosen at Gronalund. What are your thoughts about this Gerslauer creation? Is it one of your favorite wild mice coasters? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.